All right. Good afternoon and welcome to the second episode of this season's ATSU Lunch and Learn. Today, our topic is open enrollment, everything you want to know about your ATSU benefits. Our guest at the studio in Missouri is Trina Goodnow. She's the benefits coordinator through our HR department. Also joining us is my enigmatic co-host, Joe Vinton. I like that. I want to say hi, guys. Hello. Hi. I'm the enigmatic <laughs> Joe. I had no idea. Wow. I wasn't prepared <laughs> what the title. for this. I wasn't. I'm not. So don't forget, just as a quick plug, that you can watch us live in two ways. That's live at atsu.edu. You can also join us live on Facebook, and we will be taking questions on Facebook too. If you want to watch previous sessions or rewatch some of this session, you can find us in HD on YouTube. Very good. Uh, Kirsty, can I just say first, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I missed, <laughs> I think I missed your inaugural episode. Um, that was last couple weeks ago, right? Wasn't that your first it was. one? And that was my also, I want to say that that was the most masterful introduction to a lunch and learn I believe I've ever heard. <laughs> and I'm certain that they'll never ask me to do it again. So thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot for that. Uh, we're anxious to talk about benefits today, and yeah, so we're glad you're here, Trina. Before we do, though, it's also ATSU Cybersecurity Month, and uh, I know that we're going to be uh, communicating kind of on a regular basis throughout the month, um, ways that you can safeguard yourself, things that you should be aware of, uh, and especially uh, for those of us who are staff and, and students at ATSU, being aware of the cybersecurity threats that are out there and paying attention to the messages that are forwarded along through our vigilant information and technology services department is important. And then even to those of us who have kids, um, part of cybersecurity month and part of the threat is uh, cyberbullying. Uh, it's frightening that seven in 10 people are victims of cyberbullying and 37% are targets on a frequent basis. Um, so what we'd like for you to do right now is just watch this special cyber safety video uh, with a special guest uh, that will air towards the end of the month. Uh, here's a short one minute clip provided by Homeland Security about cyberbullying. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Is it still true? In the online world, playground chants echo for all to see and hear. Words, even said jokingly, can be hurtful and may have unintended consequences, especially when they are shared for the world to see. Remember to connect with care before going online. Names hurt. Bullying might begin as a joke, but kids know how to use grown-up tools like smartphones and the internet, yet don't have the perspective or understanding to see how their actions could lead to horrible outcomes. Bullied children become targets for even more vicious attacks. Stop internet predators before you go online, before your children go online. Stop, think, connect. So once again, Cybersecurity Month uh, and the threats that are posed by uh, cyber criminals and cyber attacks are something that we want to continue to emphasize throughout the month. I know that we've made some uh, purchases and plans uh, to make the month fun. I, I'm, I'm actually anxious for you to see some of the things that we've come up with that we're going to produce later in the month. But in the meantime, uh, just put cybersecurity uh, kind of on the top of your brain as we walk through this month together and work on ways that we can stay vigilant and aware. Uh, but we're going to turn now to our featured guest. Uh, I would have said something like enigmatic, but I don't have the vocabulary. Um, to do that, but you're here for an important reason. This this season sort of rolls around every year. It does. Right? And it's called open enrollment. Right. Which I'm sure to you uh, mm -hmm. sounds like a perfectly reasonable and normal phrase to say. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like somehow I'm going back to school, and I don't <laughs> think that's what it means. No. Um, so, Trina, if you would, just tell us what open enrollment is to start with, and, and what other what else you got to share with us today. Sure. Okay. So, you are right. Uh, at ATSU, enrollment does happen annually here, 
and this is a time where you can make any changes to your benefits. So you can add or remove coverage or dependence. Maybe you want to migrate from one medical plan to another. So you can make any of those changes. We'll be doing this process in the month of November, and so any changes you make during that time frame will take effect on January 1. Um, and you have to, you're locked into those decisions for the calendar year, so choose wisely, right? And that's part of why we do the informational meetings so that you can be well informed of any upcoming changes and make the best decision for you and your family. So during the middle of a calendar year, the only way you can make a change is if you have a qualifying life event. And those are major events such as a marriage, a divorce, a birth or adoption of a child, or a loss or gain of other insurance coverage. So if you have one of those events, you do have to notify HR with some documentation and we can help make those changes. Cool. Trina, so, what happens? Yeah. Sorry. No, you're up. What happens if you're planning to have one of those changes throughout the year? Like, obviously, you can't do that now. So that's something that you eventually notify HR, or that's something that maybe just happens halfway through. Right, that. right. So if there is an event, so in November, you'll be making any elections that you want for January. And then later in the year of 2018, if you have a life-changing event, you do have 31 days to notify myself or Tanya or Annabelle out in Arizona in HR of that life-changing event. And then we can help you make any changes during the calendar year. Cool. So I, I always go into panic around this season. Oh, because please I, don't do that. Because I think, oh, shoot. Okay, I did that when I started working here. <laughs> right. And so far, everything seems to be going smoothly. Mm -hmm. And anytime I have tried to make a change, mm -hmm. I've messed it up. I'm fairly certain of that. Well, we are simplifying this year's open enrollment greatly. Okay. So, so last year was the first year that we moved all of our enrollment electronically to Green Shades or okay. Green Employee. Yeah, I remember we also that. Refer. Yeah. Um, so this year we are really simplifying. You only have to go through your core benefits. And when I say core benefits, I mean medical, dental, vision, and flexible spending accounts. So we're not opening up any changes right now for life insurance or gym memberships, aquatic center, all of those additional add-ons. Add, um, add so we'll just be doing core benefits mm -hmm. and it should be fairly simple. Okay, that's good. I'm, I rolled up my sleeves because I'm actually okay. getting warm thinking about this. I'm, like, I'm certain <laughs> I, I will, will mess help it you up. through it if you have any questions. <laughs> That's so. good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what else? What else do we have here? You surely didn't get to the end of it, did you? No. So, and I do want to mention to the active enrollment versus a passive enrollment. So that again will really simplify this process. Um, we do want employees to make sure they are in the right benefits, the right medical plan, et cetera. Um, however, last year we required an active enrollment and that meant that all full-time benefit eligible employees had to go through the enrollment, whether they were waiving coverage, electing coverage, they had to go through that process. It was mandatory. Mm -hmm. This year we have it set up so we can just do a passive enrollment and that means that if you're making no changes, you don't have to go through the enrollment process. We will just roll all of your benefits over to next year and so, keep them the same. So that's what I'm remembering, mm -hmm. is last year we had to like literally select and change everything, you did. right? Yes. And, and we're that, not doing that That was year. because it was software implementation year. We had to get everyone into the system okay. initially. Correct. But we don't have to do that again. We don't. Gosh, I feel so much better about yes. this already. Yes. All right, good. <laughs> So it's yep. been a while. I don't remember what I signed up for last year. Are you going to have a way that we can review what we currently have? Absolutely. Really? And you can, you can actually log in today to atsu.greenemployee.com and look at all of your current benefits. So that will just pop right up. You can see what you're in. Um, and your check stub is another place where you can look and, and take a look at what you're paying for and which, uh, which plan design and premiums you're paying for. Right, and that's all available on that green employee it's site now. It's all on the green employee site. Yeah, cool. Correct, correct. So we are having some informational meetings. Again, we do have some fun wellness prizes we'll be raffling off during the, the meeting, so we would still encourage every employee to come because we do talk about any changes that are coming, carrier changes, plan design changes, premium changes, things like that. So again, it's, it's the one time of year where we really want to inform employees of their benefits package and help them to decide if they're in the right package or, or if they need to make a change. So 
We do have some of these informational meetings coming up. I will be in Mesa in a couple of weeks. Lucky. Yes. That's fortunate because the weather's timing. getting really no cold kidding. here. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're offering the same session several different times to help accommodate schedules. So we really do hope that uh, the Mesa staff will be able to attend one of those meetings and we'll be emailing and are they this information. We will, they we will be recording a session in Kirksville the following week. And so once we have completed all of the informational meetings, we will email out the recorded version for any remote employees or employees who were not able to attend in person. Here are the Kirksville meetings. You can see that. We'll, we'll be kicking those off the following week after Mesa. And then I will be visiting our friends in St. Louis at the clinic as well. Oh, cool. So I look forward to that. Yes. So after we are done with all of the informational meetings, we've presented the information, the actual online enrollment will be open November 6th through 21st. So you have about two and a half weeks to go on to that Green Employee website. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I hope that everyone has logged in and registered on the site. If you have not, I would encourage you to do that. You do have to register the first time you log in. Um, but again, you should be visiting this site to look at your check stubs and annually to uh, look at your electronic W-2. So it's the same process again that we mentioned as last year, enrolling in your benefits during that time frame as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, a quick break, just to say, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I know we had some uh, echoing difficulties on the Facebook Live broadcast. I think we've got it fixed now. Our technical geniuses, I wish you could see, I've got my own stream running right here on my phone, and I could show <laughs> you. They're all back there. Uh, and they think they've got it figured out. And also, we should remind you that if you're on Facebook or if you're on live stream, you can shoot us questions and we're monitoring those sites. And we'll be happy to forward those along to Trina while we've got her here. She's still got a lot to present. You're not done. I'm not done. But I just wanted to jump in and say that real quick, uh, just to let you know that, that that's possible. And Trina would love to answer those questions while we're here. Sorry for the break. Um, proceed. Okay. Yes. All right. So just a couple more uh, slides just showing um, the Green Employee website. Again, this should look familiar to you. If it doesn't, I would encourage you once again to, to visit that, maybe even before open enrollment, just to, to be familiar again with the site and remember your username and password. If you need help resetting a password, uh, the employees in payroll can do that. So Sarah Heimer or Mary Carter would be happy to help reset passwords. They probably would appreciate not getting a thousand calls in one day though. So that's why yeah, I would so encourage you to early. try to log in now. That makes Once sense. you are logged in, and here Kirsty is where you can look at your current benefits like I had mentioned earlier. So you just click on that benefits tab at the top. You can see your current benefits, and then if you scroll down, you'll be, be able to see all of the benefits you're eligible for. So that's what you should consider um, for next year. And then when you're ready to do that enrollment in November, over on the right-hand side, the blue box says Begin Enrollment. You'll just click that. You'll elect your medical, your dental, your vision, and your FSAs, or you'll waive any of those lines of coverage as well. And you type your name and hit Submit. So we are trying to make this as simple as possible this year. I wonder, will it lay what you currently have against what you're selecting when you're in that begin enrollment part? So the only way, you can't really compare a side by side. You just, you just have to look at this home screen to see I what see. you're currently in. I see. Mm -hmm. And it'll show you there. Oh, I see current enrollment. Mm -hmm. And so then once you begin enrollment, you'll be making... It's you'll, kind of a fresh page. Right, but you'll, you'll start over. you might want to print that or something to remember Absolutely. what you have. Exactly. I see. This is where I will mess it up. Mm -hmm. um, the most complicated thing is the medical plan because we have to break that down into the three different medical plans, individual or family, mm -hmm. and then also if you're in still healthy or regular premiums. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good plug right there for still healthy, right? Yes. Yes. We'll be talking about that more. Okay. Very good. Well, does that, uh, what does that do? Does that bring us to a good stopping point? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we've got a break coming up. Uh, we're got, we have a cool little segment that ITS put together that Kirstie's going to tell us about because it's cool. So we save all the cool stuff um, for her voice usage and we try to conserve that whenever 
<laughs> don't have anything really interesting to say. Um, uh, but in the, in the meantime, we're going to keep Trina around. So if you're watching the feed uh, or you know someone who's not watching the feed and they've been uh, talking about the upcoming open enrollments, maybe encourage them to jump on here for the last 20 minutes or so and shoot us a question and we will try to get it answered here. Uh, but in the meantime, let's take a break. And Kirsty, you've got a you got a video coming up for us, yeah? Yeah, we do. We're looking at one of our research series, so get to know the researchers at ATSU. And this one, I think, is particularly special. Um, our researcher today does some really interesting work. Um, I don't really want to ruin it for you, so go ahead and take a look at the video. There are weeks when I spend more time in my research lab than I do in my house. My name is Bruce A. Young. I'm in the anatomy department. This campus is Kirksville, that little slice of heaven in Missouri. Beverage that gets me through the day. Diet iced tea. I'm not proud of that. A little of both. I like to do eight to 10 projects at one time. Some of them I'm blessed with having collaborators, but I always have one or two that I do all on my own. Blood flow, I'm coming to this one. Blood flow in alligators causes paralysis. That's good, I didn't do so well on the five words. Did you get interested in your field? Almost purely by accident. I grew up playing in the woods around my family's home and reading books in my father's library. So I knew when I first went to university, I wanted to do something with science and something with animals. I originally went to school thinking I was going to become a vet, but my freshman year, I wandered into the zoology department, met a gentleman who specialized in venomous snakes and anatomy, and that was pretty much that. That was in Washington State University. Why perform research? In three words. It's my life. Night or day, both. I sleep very little, sometimes only about an hour and a half at night. So I like to do work both at night and during the day. My most memorable mentor would be Ken Cardong, a vertebrate anatomist at Washington State University who trained me to work with poisonous snakes and taught me anatomy. 
I was given a million dollars to spend on any research project. It was a really nice neurophysiology rig I've always wanted for my lab. That would cost about $250,000. There's a laser array that I rent sometimes I'd like to own. That's another 150 or so. And then there's a project I've always wanted to do in Malaysia. Big water monitors and a little submersible submarine. That would easily eat through the rest. Has your research brought you any surprises? Yes. I somewhat by accident did a study on flatulence in snakes, which we technically call cloacal popping, but is flatulence. There's some snakes that do it as a defensive behavior. It's not that intimidating, but they do it. It brought me a flood of media exposure. And from that, I started doing nature shows. Animal Planet, National Geographic, all of these people would hire me and fly me all over the world to do TV shows for them. So I had the pleasure of climbing through jungles in India and the savannas of Africa, catching cobras and mambas, something I never anticipated doing as I was in graduate school. What brings me the most pride? Oh, that's easy. That would be my number one research assistant, my nine-year-old daughter, Olivia. Can you drive a stick shift? Absolutely. Automatic, manual, British drive, American drive, trucks, anything. All-time favorite book. Richard Russo's Straight Man. I still think the best exposition of academic politics. Follow your curiosity and your love. If you do that, you'll have a great career in research. And we're back. Maybe one of the most interesting researchers uh, on the Kirksville campus, at least that I have met recently. And uh, what we need to jump right back in. We had a lot of questions come up, right, Kirsty? We did. In fact, we've got one right from Facebook. It's, can we make changes after we submit? Sort of how many changes can you make and sort of what's the process for that? Sure. So as long as you are within that November 6 through 21 time frame, if you submit your election, say even on November 6, you can go back in and instead of saying begin enrollment, the blue box will say modify enrollment. So you can modify your enrollment all the way through November 21st oh, and you'll be fine. So that's pretty good. yes, but after November 21st, we really have to cut that, cut that off and start approving changes in elections for the next year. Very awesome, good. and what happens when Joe screws up? I mean, oh, you, call, <laughs> yes. you call Trina at 2179. Yeah. Everyone has my, my number on speed dial, I think, so, <laughs> which is fine. That's what I am here for. So I am happy to, to walk anyone through that process who needs assistance. Again, it should be much easier this year than last year. We really have gone to great lengths to simplify the process. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. You're welcome. By the way, I, I had you in it. mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I would love to talk just a little bit. I know we mentioned it briefly before, but maybe about Still Healthy. What are the changes this year? What does it look like compared to last year? Uh, sure. So I do have a slide if we want to pop that up. There are just four Still Healthy requirements. Um, we have about 82% of our employees doing the Still Healthy program, which is great. We would love to see that increase even more. Um, the, the biggest hurdle probably is getting that annual wellness visit. And so you do need to do that visit before November 30th. That is the cutoff uh, mm -hmm. to, to get that completed. And if your spouse is on your medical plan, your spouse needs to also do the wellness visit. 
kind of a change from years past, we used to require children on the plan to do the wellness visits. We don't require that anymore as part of the Still Healthy program. I see. A important note, though, they're still sort of covered as part of the, the, the health plan, plan, right? Absolutely. Yes. Good right. point. So your children can still go get wellness visits, and it's covered as wellness at 100% under the Cigna Medical Plan. Um, we just don't require it as part of the ATSU wellness program. Right, right. Yes. That was yes. important to me, I know, and a lot of people right. who have kids, because it was nice that I was kind of forced to do it to, right. to keep the still healthy stuff up because mm -hmm. they needed them anyway. Yes, exactly. So, cool. absolutely. So, it's just um, some ACA Affordable Care Act guidelines uh, prohibit us from requiring children to be a part of uh, gotcha. employment, employer wellness programs. So, Trina, how long will it take for that to show up, though? I know you have that deadline, but what happens right, if it's... Right, right. So if you're looking at mysigna.com, that's where all of your goals are housed. And if you're waiting for that credit to pop up for your wellness exam, it can take uh, between six and eight weeks for that to populate. And so there is some lag time and a delay in getting that goal uh, to show up. So if it has been eight weeks and you're still not seeing that, it could be that maybe your doctor coded the visit as something other than wellness. Maybe it turned diagnostic, or maybe there has just been a, a glitch or an error in the processing system. So uh, please feel free to shoot me an email and ask. Um, I can have Cigna check on those if it has been at least eight weeks or longer. So we have to specify with our doctor that it has to be a sort of a wellness visit. Is there something we say to them in particular or they should know? It's right. <laughs> so when you're, when you're scheduling that visit, you should ask uh, for a wellness visit uh, when, you're, when you're making that appointment. Correct. Very good. Anything else on the question queue right now? Uh, I think that's it for now. So you guys mentioned still healthy. Both of you did. And uh, that's kind of part of what you wanted to talk about today as well, right? Sure, yes. So the wellness visit is the first uh, point, uh, the first requirement, I should say, to, to get through. And then secondly, you will need to do a health survey um, on mysigna.com. It really takes about 10 minutes to get through that questionnaire. So that's something you need to do annually. And then there is um, a non-tobacco question where you can certify that you are either a non-tobacco user or in a tobacco cessation program. And then finally, we ask that you do attend or watch four Still Healthy seminars each year. And that is a self-reported goal. So you mm. have to go to mysigna.com and report at four different times during the year uh, the date that you either attended or watched one of those seminars. So this is probably a silly question, but could you explain what Still Healthy is? Because um, is it just part of what we do? I mean, is it a sort of elective thing that we're doing? Can maybe explain sort of why you do it, what it is. Right. It really is our wellness program. And, you know, we have the goal of, of creating an environment here at ATSU for any employee um, to be able to be as healthy as they can be. And so we have set up these guidelines. It's a participation-based program. It's not outcomes-based. Um, we, we just, it's voluntary program. So we, uh, we encourage everyone to do that. We do offer a really nice discount on premiums the following calendar year as additional incentive as and that, well. If that ought to be, I would think that's a pretty big incentive because it's that's a nice huge. discount, right? It is. So if you're on an individual plan, you can save $700 annually um, just wow. by being on the lower premiums. And then if you have a family plan, it's around $1,700 in savings wow. for the year. No so, kidding. So do the program. It's worth it. No kidding. Mm -hmm. All right, what else? Um, I, I should also say we, just, we do see a lot of value in requiring that preventive wellness exam. Uh, prevention is so much better than cure curing a disease and so early mm -hmm. detection is so important and that is why that's the staple of of this program as well 
So I have a slide on the Still Healthy tracking. We do have a, a very short tutorial video that we have sent out. Um, if you've missed that email, feel free to shoot me an email and ask for that. It's very simple to go to mysigna.com. You click on the little My Health tab up at the top, and then you can click on your incentives and your goals. And this is where you should see when you've completed your wellness visit, it gives you credit. When you've done your health assessment, it gives you credit. When you've signed the tobacco agreement, you'll see that pop up. And then finally, you'll enter your four Still Healthy seminars and get credit for those. So please check that you have entered all of your uh, completion requirements by November 30th. Very good. Uh, Trina, I know that previously you used to, when we had the Blackboard system, you had to sort of write a little bit about what you learned from each of the Still Healthy seminars right. you went through. What's different now? Right, so we are no longer housing our Still Healthy videos in Blackboard at all. They are on a YouTube channel, which makes it very easy um, for anyone to click on and see the whole list of all of the Kirksville and the Mesa seminars. Mm -hmm. So we send that out monthly. It's on our portal. You can email me, I will email you the link. Uh, to get to all of those videos. So we try to make it really easy. There's also a lot of opportunities to get. I noticed that uh, if you get the flu shot this year, mm -hmm. you got a Still Healthy credit for that. Correct. I think I saw with Stillibration, you can volunteer to help with s some of the events. Is that right? Right. Walking in the Parade in Kirksville is actually um, a Still Healthy credit. We do walk in Wednesdays here in Kirksville. The weather is so nice. You probably don't have as many in Mesa maybe, but we've uh, set additional yeah. events up outside of the, the typical seminars to count as credit as well. So ample yeah, opportunity. They don't intentionally walk outside in Arizona. <laughs> Maybe at like eight in the morning or four something. Four or five months out <laughs> of the year. Not over lunch, right. It's, I think we're done for the winter now for Kirksville. We'll pick that up in March again, right. probably. Good. They're mm -hmm. gonna start them now in May, so they're like, <laughs> right. it's December? It's beautiful <laughs> right. outside. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Trina, we really appreciate you coming today. Sure. Is there is there anything else? Kirsty, I don't know. I haven't been monitoring the question feed very diligently. Do we have any other questions for Trina right now? No, we might be getting one. No, looks like so <laughs> far everyone's very happy with your Very effort. thorough, very, very happy with their benefits. Thorough presentation. <laughs> we appreciate that. Uh, so hang around because okay. we're going to be online live for a few more minutes still, right? And then oh. if you if you were sitting there that whole time going, no, I'll feel silly. I'm not going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Now, this is your last opportunity. We're about to give up on you. Uh, but in the meantime, kirstie has got one more segment she's going to introduce. Send those questions to Trina now and we'll make her. We just basically locked the studio door and she can't leave until we're done. <laughs> All right, Kirstie, what do you got? Great. So actually, Joe, I didn't know if you knew this, but Spark Tank is back. Um, so you might have remembered it from last year. I do um, remember it. Yes. Yeah. So it's got great prizes. It's a competition, but it really celebrates innovation and some interdisciplinary collaboration. So now's actually the time for you and your team to submit those creative teaching and learning project ideas. So in Kirksville, the deadline's actually October 22nd, so that's in two weeks. Uh, um, so you better get on that. I'll have to, yeah. Um, <laughs> you particularly, Joe, but sort of all of our listeners. Okay, all right. Um, so you can find all the information that you need to submit a proposal at the Spark Tank website. That's atsu.edu slash Spark Tank. So before, um, you, before you introduce the video, I'm super excited about this part, Kit and I. You may remember Kit. He is my much less attractive co-host <laughs> who, uh, who sometimes sits over there. I sit over there and he sits over here. I hear him. It's very confusing and I miss him a lot. Kit, I miss you. Come back soon. Um, Kit and I are going to Mesa to host the Spark Tank uh, event on the Mesa campus. It's going nice. to be really cool. I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's in like... February, which is fantastic. February. They're like, hey, would you like to leave Kirksville and come to the desert in the middle of winter? <laughs> yes. Why, well, yes, I would. Absolutely. I'll be there. Okay, cool. Carry on with what you were saying. My apologies. No, I'm so glad. So now, Mesa people, stay tuned because that application will also be coming up. Um, but we actually have a really special video. It's Dr. Gevitz telling us what Spark Tank is about. Cool.
Spark Tank is back. With over $35,000 previously awarded, we judges can't wait to see what ideas you will present at this year's competition. Hey, I'm talking to you. Do you have what it takes? I'm a little bit intimidated now. Did you see Dr. Gavitz? I did, wow. I've never seen him not <laughs> smile for that long of a period. <laughs> it's a little intimidating. Spark tank is important. Yeah. So that's coming up soon for the Missouri campus, right? So applications got to go pretty quick. Surely, hopefully you've been cooking, kicking around your ideas so far because we got to get the submissions in. But even if you haven't, just wing it. It's typically what I do. It makes Trina a little nervous, <laughs> but we get along okay. Right? <laughs> yes. You made it. It works. You did a great job. <laughs> You did, yeah. <laughs> no, you did a great job. All right. Well, I guess um, that's probably going to wrap up another episode for the for us, right, Kirsty? And um, I have to say, it's been nice having you all to myself. I think Kit will probably be back the next time around, and we'll we'll have to accommodate for his. He'll have to talk some too. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Everybody's airtime gets cut down the more people we add. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hey, Kirsty, why don't you take us out? And uh, that'll be it for today. Sure, so big thanks, especially to Trina for talking about benefits today and devoting a good portion of, I guess it's not really your lunchtime, but it is mine. So I'm gonna call it your lunch time. <laughs> sure. Thanks yeah. for using her lunchtime. That's what she said. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, also special thank you for Dr. Young for letting us find out a little bit more about him and his research projects. Um, and a big thank you to our backstage crew. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. So that's including Corey, Bob, and Jean. And we will actually see you on November 14th for another great Lunch and Learn. So don't forget, you can find us Facebook at that time and also the live.atsu. But anytime that you want to rewatch these, you can find these on YouTube. Great. All right. Thanks to everybody here. Thanks for joining us and spending your not lunch time if you're in Missouri. Uh, and we will look forward to seeing you again in just a couple of weeks on the Lunch and Learn. Bye now.